You're never going to see this in the newspapers, and you're definitely not going to see it on the television. It's a disgrace that we didn't leave the European Union on the 29th of March. Oh, 17.4 million people voted. It's a total failure of democracy. We need another referendum. It's just a stitch up because MMPs didn't rubbish, get the result. Man, rubbish, they wanted. rubbish, rubbish. What's wrong with more democracy? Like, Stop respect Brexit. the result. That's what Stop I Brexit. say. Give, Give me, me what, what I, want. I want. Today, I'm going to help you see why we're getting my knickers in a knot over the B word, you know, the political chaos that we're having. And why, as a nation, we seem to be facing an existential crisis. Hello there, my name's Ed Morrow. And in 2011, I prophesied this current political chaos that we're in, a long time before it was a twinkle even in David Cameron's eye. Even though I'm talking about the crumbling of the foundations of our society, don't be anxious about it. God's in complete control, even if the politicians aren't. So, Take a deep breath, relax, and shake it all out. Right, now that you're all floppy and relaxed, don't forget to give a thumbs up if you like this video. And if you want to see more content from Ugly Fish and keep this channel going, please click the subscribe button and ding the bell so you get notifications when more videos appear. There's a lot of talk of our society becoming more secular because of atheism and its children, humanism and secularism. Of course, they've had to be spawned because atheists have to have something to believe in. Because the atheist hasn't given proper consideration to their beliefs. They haven't given it the proper amount of thinking at all. The atheist believes in a world of randomness, of like mindless processes and survival of the fittest. They believe in opportunism and power. And they live in a world where even a high priest Dawkins says that rape is just morally arbitrary because the universe doesn't give a fudge, but they think they don't live in a world like that. At least they won't admit that they do. You see, the thing is, if they were really and truly into that atheism, they would shun all ideas of charity and community and personal responsibility and justice and truth and any sense of commitment to past or future generations. But I'm not really into that atheism, and I'll tell you for why. You see, instead, they proclaim the need for us all to get along in a world of respect and law and order and freedom. And they're all Christian principles. <laughs> it's as if they're saying, let them Christians build society for us, and I'll just sit here as a vibrating mass of randomly assembled meaningless atoms in my bedroom watching the latest YouTube video or playing the latest video game or watching the latest porn movie. The world of creating their minds isn't even the one they actually live in. So they live in a civilization based on Christian principles that's been built up over thousands of years. Then they claim those values as their own without even recognizing the Christian belief system that they were actually built on. I'll tell you what it's like. It's like picking fruit from a tree and then keeping the tree and saying, you know that tree? It doesn't need the soil it was grown in anymore. Whenever a government adopts atheism, when atheism is the controlling power in a society, it always results, always results in the death of that society as well as real dead bodies. It doesn't matter whether you wrap it up in the pretty bows of humanism or secularism. It's death. Did I just hear some atheists shout out, yeah, but what about Hitler? He was a Christian and look what he did. Except he wasn't. But just to get you started, a woman called Trudel Junge said this of Hitler. He wasn't a member of any church and he thought the Christian religions were outdated and hypocritical institutions that lured people into them. The laws of nature were his religion. He could reconcile his dogma of violence better with nature than the Christian doctrine of love your neighbour and your enemy. Who was Trudel Junge? Well, she was a woman who talked a lot to Hitler. He was her boss. Secularists saying, we just all need to get along and be neutral like it's 
I don't know, Switzerland in the Second World War isn't just going to cut it against radical Islam or authoritarianism or right-wing fascism or ultra-left-wing Marxism. You cannot just sit back, you're going to have to be ready to fight back with some positive beliefs, not just something that's about as strong as a fat-free soy frappuccino. There's been a drift and we're a much more godless society than we used to be. And that's why we're in so much trouble. Our politicians are all fighting each other because we're stumbling more and more away from God towards more godlessness. And there comes a point where God just says, okay, have it your way. Okay, have it your way. And then our politics gets exposed for what it really is, godless. But the radicalness of Christianity is that it changes society by changing people because it deals with the problem of the human heart. Well, so what? What's Christianity have I given us? Um, hospitals, schools, universities and democracy. Well, apart from hospitals and schools and universities and democracy. Well, there's human rights and the abolition of slavery and a legal and a moral framework. Okay, so ignoring all that though, what's Christianity ever given us? The good done in the name of Christ is quite astonishing. The gospel not only converts the individual, but it changes society. And on every mission field, the missionaries carried a, a real social gospel. They established standards of hygiene and purity and they promoted industry and they elevated womanhood and they restrained anti-social customs. They abolished cannibalism. Yes, cannibalism. Human sacrifice and cruelty. They organized famine relief, checked tribal wars and changed the social structure of society. Every major European university was founded on Christian principles, obviously not this one because it's not major. Social reform, medicine, democracy, the arts and modern science all owe their current existence in a big way to the teachings and ideas of the followers of Jesus Christ. But what Christianity didn't give us was all the strife and fighting and political dysfunction that we're facing at the minute. Godlessness gave us this hostility that we have. What Christianity can give us is godliness and all those lovely Christian values that even the atheists seem to cherish. So what can you do? Well, if you're atheist, trust in Christ. He died for your rebellion against God. Call out to him in prayer and get a Bible. Read the Gospel of John and find a good church where you can be in community and learn more about God. If you're already Christian, love your neighbour with every bit of love that God gives you. Pray for your local MP and our politicians that they might have wisdom and pray with all the faith that God gives you for them. And finally, I think pray for a revival in the church that means that the leadership vacuum is filled with the gospel. It means that the leadership vacuum is filled with goodness from God. It means that the leadership vacuum is filled with Christ.